Okay, let's take a look at problem PR 23-2B, which is like your homework here. So I'm not going to do the whole problem because it would take a long time and I don't think all of you want to watch that whole thing. So I'll do 1A and if you if you can follow me on 1A then you'll be able to do 1B which deals with labor no problem. So in this case here it's a company that makes jackets. I'm really cold coat company. That's pretty creative. So they have two types of material filler and liner. So we need to look at both of those. How did we do with respect to that those two materials. So here we have standard information and I'm just going to talk Talk about filler for now. So women's coats need four pounds of filler and men's need 5.2. That's the plan or the standard for it and it should cost two dollars per pound. I have some information here on planned production. I would ignore that. And then I've got actual production. They actually produce 4,400 women's coats and 5,800 men's coats and here's what the price they paid and how much they used. So let's figure out those variances. So again, I think the goalpost model is the best way to go here. So actual quantity times actual price paid, that's 48,000 pounds used times $1.90 that I paid per pound. The actual quantity times the standard price, that's the 48,000 I actually used, but I'm now going to compare it to the standard price. So here I'm isolating the effect of the difference in price. And then over here, if a student gets this wrong 90% of the time, it's right here. And usually the mistake they make is they take the planned production times the standard. Well, if you think about it, if you produced more or less than the plan, you'd want to be judged against what you did, not against what the plan was, which might have been much lower or much higher and caused you to use more material for a valid reason. So what I want to know is how much liner material should they have used for that level of production? So they, the 44 coats they actually produced for women should have used four pounds each. The 5,800 coats that they did produce for men should have used 5.2 pounds each. So that gives me, and times the standard price of $2. So that gives me 47,760 pounds of material they should have used at that level of production if they had consumed according to standard. So times the $2. So I extend, I do the math here, and I go from left to right. Oops, sorry. So 91,200 minus 96,000, that's a $4,800 favorable variance. Makes sense, it's a negative number because actual is better than what the plan was. So, which makes sense, $1.90 versus $2, that's good news, favorable is good news. So that's my material price variance. Over here, 96,000 minus 95,200, that's $480 unfavorable because it's a positive number, which makes sense. We used 48,000 pounds of liner to produce that number of jackets, and we should have used 47,760. That's bad news, unfavorable. So I can add those together and get a total favorable variance of 4,320. I want to take a note here, so I can also compare the outer two goal posts, so I can take 91,200, 91,200 minus 95,520, and I get negative 4,320, which is this, so I can double check my math. So I'm going to do the same thing for the liner, so you can see it one more time. So the actual quantity times the actual price paid for the liner material, I actually used 85,100 pounds at eight, and I paid 820 a pound. So I've got the 85,100 times my standard price, which was $8. Right now I know I'm gonna have an unfavorable variance because I paid more than my standard. And then again, how much uh, liner material should I have used for that amount of production? So for the 4,400 women's coats we actually made, I should have used seven pounds of liner, or seven square yards. And for the 5,800 men's coats, I should have used 9.4, all times the standard price of $8. So I do the math here, that gives me 85,320 times eight. I can see that I used a little less than what the standard called for, that's good news. So I do the math and again, I go left to right. So 697,820 minus 68,800 gives me 17,020, an unfavorable variance. I spent more than the plan said I should have at that level. That's my material price variance. And then my material quantity variance, 68,800 minus 682, 560, that's a 1760 favorable variance. So the impact financially of using less material than what the standards required had an impact of 1760. So I can add that together to get 15,260, 
unfavorable as the total and I could compare this number minus that number and get this here. So I hope you found that helpful. There's a lot of different ways to solve these problems. You'll probably, if you look online, you might find other ways to do solutions. Uh, doing it by hand like this will give you all the answers you need to fill in the publisher's uh, requirements on the software there. So I think this is an easier method. Just uh, I used to do this method in the real world and it made sense to me and I could explain it to other people. So I hope you found that helpful. Thank you.